All right, we've got our tasty wave header here. Wave looking wave header. header. You just drop in and just smack the lip. Drop down, snap. So I've got these primaries started. I've got a really nice wavy shape. Uh, that's what Art was really going for. I'm gonna wrap those up uh, in this episode. Let's get started. So I've got an off cut from one of my UJ bends from what I've fabricated so far. Um, I'm starting to look at how I want each of these runners to uh, flow together. So I want to pair this one and this one together, right? I want to keep this angle. I don't want to cut this piece, right? That's, I think that's a nice angle there. This one I'm going to have to cut somewhere around here. I've got a bunch of different off cuts, but that's one I grab. And just to eyeball it, that's a 45 degree bend. So that, that looks pretty close to where I want it. And then the other one's just gonna come down here and follow along underneath it. And then I can cut this to whatever length I want. So I could make that really short, really long. I'm gonna cut this, tack it together, stick the collector on there. So I wanna cut it at where it's gonna be at the bottom of my slip, right? Cause that goes in there. Yeah, that's way too high. So I, I need to cut that so that it's aimed down more. When you're building a custom header, you may not always get it right on the first try. The important thing to remember is to remain focused, take your time, and not get frustrated. I want it about like, about like that. Cause then it's gonna be parallel with the engine. It's also very important to do a lot of test fitting when you're building a custom header. Each time you add something or make a change, you should go back and test fit it to make sure what you did is still gonna work for your header. So once I get this collector, uh, tack welded in place then I can basically uh, do the rest of the work on the bench because the other collector is going to go right beside it they're going to be parallel together and all I'll need to do is just run the other three remaining runners uh, from from their bends to the collector inlets every time I make a cut I like to deburr my material the reason for this is that if I'm tack welding something together and it's not going to come apart before I do my final weld, that burr is still going to be on the inside of the pipe and that is not good for flow. So I've broken off the number four runner. I've marked where I want to cut it before I broke it off. I'm going to cut it now. Um, but the general idea is to bring bring it down into parallel with that so that it goes into the collector together. So it's gonna come down in here. So I'll, I'll have to piece together like I did in this section here, uh, another piece that'll be a little bit longer that'll tie into uh, our bend at the top. I'm just taking a sliver off it to straighten it out. I can't do it with one bend like that. I have to do it. I have to do it in two pieces. Actually, you know what? I, I'm going to need more bend than this. This isn't enough bend. It needs to be more than 45. Got another UJ. This is the radius I want. So I'll use this as a reference because it's close. 
see if I want to align this with that straight into this. This is my reference, so I'm going to cut a piece off of this, off of this, a little bit longer on the bend than that. Unfortunately, I got to cut it right out of the middle of this thing. You can always reuse the parts, right? Yeah, I'll still be able to use this somewhere else, right? I may use this like for uh, this runner or, you know, a different one, but. So I need to trim just a little bit off of this bend and the piece that I will put in will be longer, right? I need to clean this anyway, so I'll clean it and then just fit it in there. So this is just kind of sitting in place. Uh, I've fitted that, so I'm gonna tack weld this piece together and then I can move on to number, uh, number three and then I'll do number two. So how do you mark it so that Pete, you know where you're- Don't going? touch it. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> So if you marked it, you know what I, I marked it because in case it fell out. Like in case someone like me touched it? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Once Art learns to keep his hands to himself, I continue tack welding the runners. It's too close. Yeah. I gotta pull it in further. It's gotta go, it's gotta go closer towards it, the pipes. It's gotta go in, the, it's gotta tuck in. Otherwise it's gonna more. bake yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you test fit. So it needs to tuck in. The collector. I want this to be this way. Further. This I can wiggle around, it's not a big deal. Sometimes you have to go backwards to go forwards. I wasn't happy with the clearance on the number four runner to the fender, so I had to take the header out, break that runner apart, and start it over. Uh, What's wrong, Aaron? Need a break. Staring at this too long. A few moments later. I think that's a good start, yeah? It's two down, two to go, two primaries down, two primaries to go. And the, and the, the next two should be even quicker. I mean, just, I'll have to do just a slight bend, but it'll actually provide better clearance around your steering anyways. So now I'm ready to start on my number three runner and I've got my other collector just kind of held in place by a pair of needle nose vice grips here. And then I need to plan out how to get this uh, number three from here to that collector there. Now I've got a bunch of off cuts that are left over from what I've built so far. And uh, basically I'm just gonna take a couple of pieces and then measure them up, eye them up to see if I can figure out uh, a nice way for this to bend down, right? From that cut and then have another, it's gonna have to have a little offset to go down into there like that. So if I take this collector off, I'll be able to just hold that in place where generally that's gonna run. And then that piece would be something like that. So these may not be the two pieces that I use, but um, they're good for, you know, just having a look and see what, what you could possibly use. So first I'm gonna break this apart. I'm gonna make this cut and then I'll go back to where I'm at now um, and begin to mock up this last section of this runner into the collector. And then once that one's complete, then I'll continue with the number two and do the same thing from this runner here all the way into the collector underneath the number three. 
Having a runner that fits through the port on my head flange makes it easier to disassemble and reassemble when I'm mocking things up. Now I can take my two pieces and have a better look. So if I have a little more leg on this, I just cut this to match this angle. Do you start with tacking that together? Or do you... No, I start with putting the collector back on here like this, taking my piece that's going in here, inserting it, right? But you, it's not long enough, so... It's not long enough, so I need to cut one. So I'll cut one and I'll cut it a little bit long and then I'll insert it and then I'll, I'll, I'll put the same cut here on the, this bend yeah. and I'll, uh, um, I'll, I'll fit it so that until I get the collector placement that I want, right? I'm gonna cut it long there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that until I get this fit. So that's about where I want that to end up. It's pretty, it's pretty close to parallel, but I don't know for sure until I get my other collector on the end of this. So I'm gonna cut this a little bit long based on the collector that's already there. And then I'm gonna fit this on and see where it ends up and, and what this gap here looks like. And if I need to make a minor adjustment or something, I'll do that. piece and then we can continue on with uh, our downpipe. What do you think Art? That looks alright, eh? That looks awesome. Let's test fit it. Alright. I think that's gonna be plenty clear though. What do you think? <laughs> hey Jay, how's yours looking? Looking really good. I got the Invisitude. I got the Invisitude feature. Uh, it actually the head the head flange is there. Yeah, the head flange. That's is a there. start. Oh, you were you were given the head flange. I forgot. Actually, instead of uh, you know busy playing on Art's car, I've been heavily working at Vibrant on some pretty hardcore projects. Wipe that stupid grin off your face, Art. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> Don't touch the Invisi tubes. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> the Invisitubes. The Invisitubes. <laughs> is that gonna be a new? Is that a vibrant? Is it, oh, is that is that gonna be in the new catalog? Is yes. that that must be that heavily, you know, busy yeah. project he's been working on? You obviously haven't watched the Jetsons. A few moments later. You see this face? This is my angry face. Five minutes later. A little longer than a few minutes later. My invisit tubes don't do that. Yeah. I guess you better go back to stainless then. <laughs> oh, looks awfully tight in there. I like it tight. <sighs> Much, much later. We gotta, we gotta spruce it up here. Yeah. And have some, some camaraderie, because this is my fellow fabricator at Vibrant, and I am the other. <laughs> what? Where's your shirt? Where's your shirt? You're wearing a root sweater. I want you to draw me like one of your French girls, wearing this. All right. Wearing only this. Anyway, um, <clears throat> certainly it wouldn't, you know, fit in the Celica very well. N not very well, no. Probably not. More moments later. Once Jay was done trolling us for the day, we were able to get some work done. I, yeah, I just kind of stuck this piece in here to, that's another off cut.
happy with what we've got tack welder for our primaries. We've got our collectors located. In the next episode, we're gonna be continuing with the secondaries. Uh, also make sure you get a chance to get over to the Speed Academy channel to see what kind of shenanigans Jake and Dave and Peter are getting up to.